morning to you. How good it is to see you in this place, uh, whether you're in this room uh, or if you happen to be in the overflow room down in the fellowship hall uh, or if you're joining us online, it is good to welcome you to this time of worship. Hey, today's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to be talking about something fun today, friendship. All of you have friends? If you don't have friends, maybe you'll have one before today's over. Uh, you're an awesome group of people. You really are. And I just want to say that one of the things people often say to me when they visit French Broad is uh, French Broad is a very friendly church. And you are that. You, you're friendly uh, to one another and you're friendly to, uh, to new faces and newcomers. So if you happen to be here for the first time, I always say this, or you happen to be joining us for the first, first time, I hope that you will find a friend today. I hope that you will experience friendship with Jesus, first of all, and most of all, but also other friends, too, who will come alongside you and encourage you uh, in the walk of life that we're on. Uh, thank you, as always. Uh, you have been doing such an excellent job uh, of wearing the mask and of uh, socially distancing and washing your hands, all those things that have really, we're doing what we can to take care of each other. Thank you for continuing to do that. There are many churches uh, in our community that have had to revert to online services. We want to continue meeting in person as long as we can, as much as we can. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to continue doing that. Thank you for doing your part. You, you have been and you are doing that. Uh, so thank you uh, for continuing to do that. Uh, invite others uh, to join with us uh, in worship in person and let them know that we're doing all that we can to be safe as we gather uh, in the ways that we're doing that. Also, secondly, if you would uh, join in prayer this week. Uh, you know, COVID certainly has impacted the way in which we do church, but it hasn't impacted us being church, right? So I want to encourage you and ask you to pray. Uh, our church leadership is going to be meeting uh, on next Sunday afternoon here in the early part of the year, praying about and seeking God's vision, wisdom, and direction for uh, our ministry for 2021. There's a lot of things that we're having to do differently, of course, um, but God has a plan for this church, for his church, uh, in 2021. So I want to ask you to do something. I want to ask you to do seven minutes, say it with me, seven minutes of sincere prayer, seven minutes of sincere prayer each day for this fellowship, for its leadership. Uh, and for us as a congregation, we will understand and seek and know God's will uh, and way for 2021, what he's calling us to be and to do together. And so today I'll ask you, and I'm going to email you each, each day, I'm going to email you a scripture uh, and a suggested directed prayer for the next seven days, okay? So nothing long. Now, if the Lord leads you to 17 minutes or 70 minutes, how much better? But seven minutes. Is something that you can do, seven minutes of directed, sincere prayer uh, for this fellowship and what God would have us to be and do together in 2021. Uh, we know that for the 12 months of 21, God would have us to not be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. Thank you. You've already got that in your head. So that's one thing that we're going to do together uh, this year is to not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. But that God will make our hearts one heart and our hands one hand as we seek to fulfill his purposes uh, for such a time as this in this year. Uh, got it? Say, got it? got it? All right, good. All right, you got it. All right. God has called us here to worship this morning. Say hello to your neighbor, uh, a hearty wave and a smile, uh, as we are able to do right now in greeting one another. And then let's begin to worship him uh, through singing. Can we stand together? Let's worship He's a stronghold in times of trouble, and those who know his name put their trust in him, for he has not forsaken those who seek him. Let's sing together.
go to that friend who sticks closer than a brother. Lord, we come before you and thank you that you are a friend that is here for us in times of trouble. You're here walking with us through the times of joy. The mountaintops, the valleys, Lord, you are here. In the midst of a world that we are living in, we thank you for the great and precious promises that we have from you and how we experience your presence and your peace at times when we need it most. And we pray that for those around us that have never experienced the truth of that. And Lord, the peace that you do bring in times of trouble. We thank you, O oh Father, that you look down upon us and knew our great need and that you put on flesh the person of Jesus Christ came and dwelt among us. And we beheld your glory. And Lord, for those who believe and trusted in you, you gave them the right to become sons and daughters, children of God. And that is what we are by faith. So thank you for welcoming us, welcoming us into your family. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have called us friends. I pray that your Lord, blessing would rest upon us that we might in turn be a blessing to the world. We pray for our nation and its leaders. And we pray this week especially as a new president is installed and a vice president and other leaders are taking positions, not just in our country, but we pray also for spiritual leaders. We pray for churches uh, in our community. We pray for our nation at large. We pray for hope and restoration and peace to come. We thank you that you have taught us how to live in those ways, and yet we confess to you that we have gone our own way. We have ignored your way, and we have seen and reaped the results of going our own way. So forgive us, I pray, O oh God, and give us hearts to seek after you and to walk with you and to love our neighbor as ourself. Would you hear us, O oh Father, as we lift names and needs to you this morning, as those of old brought family and friends to Jesus? We do so just now. your word tells us to be still and to know that you are God. And so in the stillness and the quietness of just a moment, we are mindful, even Lord of your presence in this place. May you be celebrated, may you be lifted up, may you be glorified, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to invite our children's time this morning. Who has that I'm looking for? All right, thank you so much. Children, we love you. <laughs> and we celebrate you, and we know that God is doing great things in your lives, and you're going to be amazing and awesome, not only now, but in the future, too. We love you. How about that? Can we just say that to our children? Everyone? Children, we love you. And you are amazing. All right, awesome. Let's continue worshiping together, shall we? Well, with that, that means we get to stand up and sing together the servant song as we work together, as we worship together, and we strive together to be in face to face in this new way.
friends, who needs them? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody, that's right. We do, don't we? Yeah, sometimes we, uh, we, we may feel that way. Well, everybody needs friends. And so I'm glad you're here this morning because we're going to be talking about something really important. And that is friendship. You know, to everyone here in this room, down in Fellowship Hall, you know, uh, everybody needs friends, wherever you may be. Uh, those who are joining us online, you know, you can't be here in the room with friends, but uh, I hope that you will know that uh, we want to be your friend. How many of you remember your first best friend? Like your very first friend, maybe it was in kindergarten, or maybe it was in, in school, or maybe it was at, in your neighborhood. Um, we all remember, most of us remember, I think, our first best friend. Uh, I remember my first best friend. He showed up in a little black Volkswagen, and he was hanging out the window. We had met at school, and he was hanging out the window of his sister's car, and he pulled into my house. Uh, his name was Bobby. And uh, he was one of my first best friends, uh, you know, not only at school, but also in my neighborhood. Uh, we remember that. Yeah, uh, what kind of things do friends do for us? Maybe just real quickly. What, what do friends do for us? Encourage. All right, they encourage us. What else? They what? They love us. They love us unconditionally, thankfully. What else? They support They make us smile. They listen. They listen. Yeah, friends do all those things and so much more for us, don't they? Those are the, the people who are, uh, I said it this way, here, and you can quote this or tweet this or whatever you do with it. Friends make the unbearable stuff of life bearable. That's just for me. That's kind of what friends do. Friends make the unbearable stuff of life bearable. They just, that's what friends do. You know, apparently having friends are, it's pretty important. In fact, if you go to Advent Health, one of their approaches in medicine uh, is that they give you a little card to ask you three questions. Well, one of the first questions, you know what the first question they ask you is? Uh, not how are you feeling today, but here's, here's one of the first questions they ask you. Do you have someone in your life who loves and cares for you? Isn't that an interesting question to ask when you're asking people about their health? Did you know friendship can actually improve your physical health and certainly your spiritual health? They also ask you, do you have a source of joy in your life? Friends bring joy to us, do they? they? They do. They bring happiness and a sense of joy. They ask you, do you have a sense of peace today? Now, friends have a way of just kind of calming us down when we're kind of not so calm. Uh, and there have been times, uh, you know, and, and I have a little thing in, in my basement. It's a little wooden box that has a place for a candle inside. And it says, happiness is being married to your best friend. I, I'm thankful that I, I married a friend. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and she's still my friend today. Uh, did you know that having a friend, it really improves your health? So at the beginning of January, this short series that we started from 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you want to go ahead and turn there, 2 Timothy chapter 4, um, I ask you to read the entire book. And it doesn't take long, uh, you know, I hope you'll read this entire letter today if you haven't read it already. But read it, you know, it's four chapters. It really doesn't take you long. We began this series, Getting Past Winter, and we talked about the harsh winters of the Midwest and how many years ago they used to, maybe still do, uh, tie a rope, so to speak, from the house to the barn. Uh, so that if you went to the barn to take care of the animals late in the day and a snowstorm came up, and some of the snowstorms could be so blinding and come up so quickly that they'd have literally a rope to get back to the house safely. And we talked about going through the harsh times of life, we all kind of need a rope, metaphorically speaking, to hold on to, uh, to get us through uh, those times. And we, we're creating, if you will, this rope of four strands uh, that we can all hold on to as we navigate through this rough winter season that we're in. Not just the cold, but we got COVID, we got a mess in our country. We're all aware of that. We all know, we know the bad news, right? I'm going to give you some good news today. And I want to, this stuff that we're learning, listen, this stuff that we're learning, it's critical for survival. Understand this. It's not just for you and me, though, and shame on us if we keep it to ourselves. It's important that we share it with other, these truths with others, too. So we've learned from the life of the Apostle Paul that to get through the hard winter seasons of life, we need four things. And what are those four things? Faith, friends, family. And forever, a forever perspective. We'll talk about what that means. Today we're talking about friends. Last week we looked at the importance of faith. And uh, when going through the hard season of life, you remember Paul was facing down winter. 
but he was also facing literally what was probably the end of his, his days um, from Rome's oppression. And listen, governments, you know, governments come and go, but Jesus lasts forever, okay? So, and Paul stayed focused on that in his life and ministry. And you and I need to do the same. So we do well to do that. Faith, not in yourself, but faith in Jesus, who is our ever-present help, you remember, in our time of need. We learned how faith begins, how it grows. We saw the outcome of faith, of real faith, in real life, and friendship with Jesus. So if you didn't get that, go back and look at it on YouTube, or check it out on our, our Facebook, uh, and just listen to that sermon and get called up. So let's begin with friendship. You recall what Paul said when he was talking about being on trial for his life in Rome. He said, at my first trial, do you remember what he said? No one came to my defense, right? Uh, no, I was there by myself. But, he said, the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. Do you remember that? The Lord stood at my side. When it comes to friends, Jesus is the only friend who can and will never leave you nor forsake you. He's the only one who will be there for you when all your other friends cannot or will not or just aren't there for you. And Jesus, Paul experienced that by faith. He experienced the literal presence of Jesus standing with him. So if you or I go to the doctor and they ask you, do you have someone who loves you or cares for you? I want you to be able to answer, I do. His name is Jesus. And he's my best friend. And he's always there for me. I want you to know, I want you to experience that kind of relationship with him and that friendship with him. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and he is always faithful. Now God has made us spiritual beings and we can experience his presence in those ways and his friendship in those ways. But we're also living this life currently in the flesh. You are, I am. And so sometimes we need friends with flesh on, right? Fle friends with skin on. We need, real, God knows that too. And so I wanna talk about that just a little bit this morning. The verse we're going to look at this morning is one of those verses you'll just blow by in this letter. You'll just pass it right over, and you'll miss the entire importance of it. But every word is important in Scripture. Did you know that? And so this verse, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 19, is the verse we're going to look at today. And it's a simple verse. It's toward the end of Paul's letter. And here's what he writes to Timothy. You remember Timothy, the close relationship that Paul had with Timothy. And he writes this. Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Anesiphorus, and we pass it on by, right? It's like, oh, yeah, he said, say hello to some people and whatever, and we just go on, and we missed it. But I want us to stop and to get the importance of that. Remember, as uh, good students of the Bible, your SOAP notes, right, S-O-A-P, Scripture, Observation, application, prayer. Can you do that? Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So what observations can you make about this verse? Well, who's speaking? Who is he speaking to? Paul is speaking. Who's he speaking to? Timothy. What is being said? He's asking him to greet some people, to say hello to some people for him. Simple as that, right? It's a pretty simple thing. But why would he say that? Let your mind go a little deeper. Why would Paul ask Timothy to greet these people? And who are these people? I mean, do you ever ask that question when you're reading through Scripture? Well, who are these people anyway? I ask questions when I read the Scripture. Uh, why, when Paul is likely about to die, would he want Timothy to say hello to these three people? Because they are they're important. They're friends. They're important to him. And so here's the truth of that today. In the application, what application should we make out of this? Uh, well, let's first of all look at who are Priscilla and Aquila. When and how did they become Paul's friends? Why are they important to Paul? How many of you could tell me the story of the first friend you made in high school? Remember going to ninth grade? That was such a big transition. Man, I remember my home room was in the band room. It wasn't even in the actual building, right? It was in that building out back, and I'm thinking, oh, man. You know, I was trying to find my way through the crowded hallways of my high school, and I had to go all the way out there to the band building where my home room was and sit with those people who were in my, you know, I don't know, like P through Z. I don't know what it, what it was in the alphabet, right, how they 
grouped us at that time. But you know, I made some of my best friends in high school in that band room, in home room. Isn't it interesting? The first people you meet when you first go to a particular place. Some people tell us that the people you meet in the first 72 hours, college students, will often become your best friends while you're in college. Did you know that? The people you meet in the first few days or weeks that you move to a new town will often become your best friends. Interesting how that works. Most of us can remember the first friend that we met in college or maybe when we went to work at our first job. We can remember the person who was friendly to us. Can I read you the story of how Paul became friends with Priscilla and Aquila? It's in Acts chapter 18. You can turn there if you want to. Uh, Paul is on missionary, uh, on mission. He goes uh, from Athens to Corinth. And the scripture tells us, uh, as if you read there in Acts chapter 18, just right off the bat, there he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, uh, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Can you imagine, like if your government said, all Jews or all Christians leave the country? And you just had to go somewhere. You had to go find another place to live. Well, they got expelled from Rome. Um, some historians, Suetonius wrote, since Jews constantly made disturbance at the instigation of Crestus, uh, Claudius expelled them from Rome. Some scholars believe this Crestus involved disputes about Jesus. And one scholar in particular argues that both the ban and expulsion were results of various disputes surrounding early Christians. So uh, we'll find out a little bit more about Aquila and Priscilla in just a moment. But the, the scripture tells us that Paul met them at this point in their life. Corinth. Okay, you with me so far? So we meet our friends at some particular point. They're going through something in their life, so are we. And the scripture says, Paul, Paul, uh, Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. What connected them? Just real quickly, observation. Their work, their vocation. Simple as that. Sometimes you meet people and you have something in common with them, right? You both are of the same trade. Paul had learned the trade of tent making in case his other dream didn't work out. You know, it's good to have a backup plan when you're young, right? In case this dream you have of being a pharisaical lawyer doesn't pan out for you, maybe you should learn to make tents. You know, I could hear his parents talking to him now uh, before he headed off to Jerusalem to study under Gamaliel. But Paul, under, he, he knew how to make tents, and so when he meets this couple, so he stayed and worked with them. Later on in verse 18, the scripture tells us that Paul stayed in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, uh, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Interestingly, they joined his ministry team. They arrive at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So Paul is continuing his mission and ministry. Aquila and Priscilla settle in Ephesus. Who else ends up being in Ephesus? and pastoring the church there. Timothy, we, we studied about him a, a while back. All right, <laughs> Apollos, verse 26, Apollos was a young minister also who began to speak boldly in the synagogue and when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him into their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. So he was a young guy who needed discipling and Priscilla and Aquila were apparently uh, godly people and mature people and so they invite this young minister to their home and they grow together in the word. And they help to disciple him there in Ephesus. Well, when Paul writes a letter to the, Rome, uh, his letter to the church at Rome in chapter 16, he, uh, verses 2 to 4, he writes these words, Greek Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Jesus Christ. Listen, they're not just tent makers anymore. They have become co-workers in Jesus Christ. They still are tent makers, of course, but they have also become ministers in the gospel with Paul. And Paul writes, they risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. 
you begin to get a sense of who these people are. They're the kind of friends who would risk their life. Do you have friends like that? That if you ever got in a fight, they would like wait in there with you? You ever have? You, those are the kind of friends. If you are ever in trouble, they'll come to your aid. These are these are the kind. What kind of friends are they? They're the best kind, right? Yeah. They're the kind you want. Well, here's a quick lesson: making friends. Can I just run over this real quickly? Because sometimes people really struggle with this. Say hello to people. Can just start there. Say hello to people. Paul said hello to Aquila, maybe in the marketplace. And then he went to see them. He said, hello, learn, do you live around here? Are you just visiting? No, we just come from Rome. And we were expelled, expelled from, from Rome because, uh, you know, we're having conversations and a little bit of agitation going on uh, there. And the Romans, the government just said, get out. And we had to move. We had to leave. And Paul said, really? That's amazing. Well, I'm going from town to town, city to city, village to village, and telling people about Jesus. Maybe we could spend some time talking. That'd be great. Why don't you come and see us? And so Paul goes to see them. Do you see how friendship works and how it builds? So you look for someone that you have something in common with. Ask, you know, what do you do for a living? And then you talk about, or what do you, what do you like to do when you're not working? Hobbies, right? Just ask those kind of questions. Where do you worship, if you worship at all? And you begin to have a sense that this person maybe is, we've got something, some things in common. We'd like to share some time and friendship together. So go see them. Uh, make an effort to spend time with them. Go stay with them. You know, go to a vacation with them. That'll see if your friendship is real. Hey, go into business with them. That'll test your friendship. You know? Some of you have done that before. Seriously, to be a friend and to keep a friend requires regular communication. Can I just say that with you? It requires an ongoing commitment and an occasional investment. I mean, if you do those three things, you can probably be a pretty good friend. If you just reach out from time to time, if you... Make that commitment, this, you know, longer term, and if you invest some time, thought, and money occasionally, uh, you can be a good friend. So Paul says, greet Priscilla and Aquila. They're the kind of friends who would risk their lives for me. And at the end of my life, I just want you to tell them I'm thinking about them. Not just them. The household of Onesiphorus. Someone who has, anybody who has a concordance, we're going to find, I'll teach you a little Bible trick here in the middle. Uh, if you ever have, have that little, uh, does anybody have a two-column Bible within the center you have references to go and look for other places? Can somebody tell me where we would find out more about the house of Anessa Forest? I like interactive sermons today, it's just that. Because I want you to get this. This is what real important. Anybody read the entire book of Timothy, of 2 Timothy? If you have, you'll find that we can find out about the household of Onesiphorus, where? In chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. Okay, I gave it away to you. So, Paul writes in the early part of this same letter to Timothy, May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day, that day when the Lord comes. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Paul is thinking about his life and his journey and his ministry. And coming to mind is this guy who not only was helpful to him in Ephesus, but also who had looked for him, he had been, uh, this first had been to Rome, and while he was in Rome, he looked hard for me, the scripture says. He often, Paul said, refreshed me. That word is like a cool breeze on a hot day, or a cold drink of water on a hot day. It's that kind of refreshing. He was not ashamed of my chains. Listen, friends like Onesiphorus, they come to you when you're at your worst moments, and they love you anyway. They're not ashamed of you. They'll stand with you in good times and bad times. They'll search hard for you until they find you. And they will help you often, not just one time, but they will help you and refresh you often. On your worst days, they show up. And they make the unbearable stuff of life bearable. Life has been a little unbearable lately, hasn't it? I mean, it's just been tough for all of us. I mean, we, we've been struggling like a cold 
long gray winter day with a constant cold bitter wind that just won't quit quit blowing, right? How many of you have a friend that could just use some refreshing? You say, well, I could use some refreshing. But how many of you have a friend? Maybe you just thought of lately. Maybe a cold drink or a hot cup of coffee. Somebody else might like a bouquet of flowers. I don't know what your friend's like. A cold milkshake does it for me. You know, if you want to do that. Uh, or a healthy fruit smoothie. You know, depends on. Um, so six people in this room and three people, if you're in the, if you're in the overflow room in Fellowship Hall or don't have an opportunity, let me ask you, what could you do for a friend if you had $5? Well, how could you refresh a friend with five bucks? Just anybody. You could get a coffee, sure. You could do that. What else? Inspire them with a new book. You could inspire them with a new book, sure. You could. Five dollars is it. You could do a lot of things, right? What else? Hot dog world. You could go to hot dog world and probably get them and yourself a hot dog. <laughs> Write a card, give them some chocolate. What else? Card, yeah, card, yeah. All right, so in this room, under your chairs, six of you, I'm sorry, not all of you, six of you. Have an envelope. Would you look under your chair just now and see if you're one of the lucky ones who have an envelope with a $5 bill in it? It will be close to the front. And if you have it, just kind of hold it up and say, I'm, I'm lucky today. I'm blessed today. Some of you, all right, you're finding the cards. All right, you found it. There it is. By the way, this doesn't affect the church budget for those of you on finance. All right. So here's what I want you to do. You, you, you. Fortunate people who come to church and go away with $5. It's not just for you. <laughs> it can be for you and your friend. I want you to do like the Anessa Forest Challenge. I want you to refresh a friend this week. I want you to let a friend know that you love them and you're just thinking of them and you appreciate them. Now, you'll think of the way to do it. I don't know how you'll do it, but you'll think of the way to do it. Um, that was fun, right? That was fun. Now you say, well, I didn't get five dollars, but here, here's the thing. You got a nudge, at least, to be able to think about, oh, what can I do? It doesn't take five dollars. It could take a stamp, literally, and just you know, a little postcard. You could do. But Paul reached out through a letter and just said, I'm thinking of you. Would you tell them I said hello? The thought, to know that you're in someone's thoughts really, really matters. And listen, I'm telling you, folks in this life, right this moment, need to know that they're not alone. They need to know that they have made a difference in somebody else's life. And you can do that. You have made a difference in my life. You're a friend. So I want you to do that this week. Even if you didn't get an envelope, make a difference. And well, all of us need friends. One, two, or three. People that you invest in, that who in turn they invest in you. People that you care about and who in turn care about you. And Paul reached out to those three very special people in his life. Who do you need to reach out to this week? You say, well, maybe, you know, Pastor, when COVID's over, I'm going to. While COVID's going on, I'm going to. In the now, not later, in the now, I'm going to reach out. Proverbs 18, 24 says, a person or a man who has friends must himself be friendly. Paul took the initiative. He said hello to a man named Aquila and changed his life. He was refreshed by a man named Anesiphorus and that changed. We, friendship is about giving. It's also about receiving. It's about letting people do for you too. There's a lot of evil in this world, a lot of hard things going on in this world, but for the 12 months of 21, we will not be overcome by evil, but we shall overcome evil with good. So the first step is often doing what's right in front of you. And it's building up those friendships that God has blessed you with. Take the Anessa Forest Challenge this week. Refresh your friend. Let's pray. Father, you have called us to be godly people, and you have shown us what it means to be friend, to be a friend. And Jesus, you said it this way, no greater love has anyone than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And we read over these verses in scripture and we're so busy and we don't often stop and take the time to learn about friendship, learn about significant people. And sometimes those names 
even of our friends, come to mind and they pass in a given day. But help us this week to take the opportunity to refresh a friend and to say you're important to me and I'm thankful for you. Lord, we are thankful for your presence in our lives. For you turn those difficult moments of life into something beautiful. And you, O oh Lord, made the unbearable bearable. Help us to do that for others. In your precious name I pray. Amen. You know, when you think about all that God has done for us this morning, we're going to end with just a little celebration of who he is. And I pray that you will commit your life to him and welcome him into your life as a friend who is always present. But more than that, you will be thankful for the friends that he has placed around you, in particular this week. Let's stand and let's sing together and let's worship as we close.
do stuff, you know, like, he's done stuff for me, and like, he can do stuff for you too. He's a great friend. Um, I hope that you'll share that as you go this week, and I hope that you'll refresh your friend. Um, just do that. Uh, don't think about it. Don't pray about it. Just do about it. You know, some things you ought not pray about or think about, you just need to do. So uh, go and do that. Um, Dan Brown, would you pray for us, brother, as we close today? Yeah, Father, we just thank you for this day that you've given to us. Thank you for uplifting us in times of, of difficult times, Father. Yes. Encouragement, knowing that we can look for you. And Father, we just find the hope and the love and the expectations of knowing that you're in control and that you can lead us through any difficult situation, Father. Yes. We know trials make us stronger because it grows us closer to you and pulls us closer to you, Father. We pray that this week that we will. We'll go out and uh, reach out to our fellow man and woman, Father, and just let them know that we love them and we yes. want to uh, spend time with them and just and just spend time with you, Father, most importantly this week as well. We just want to praise your holy name. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. As we head out this morning, um, let's do this. Let's let our children head out first. And uh, Miss Jean and children, you're welcome to head down to your Bible study group. On your way out, if you didn't, take advantage of the offering box uh, that is in the back. Remember, that is another way that you worship. And you've done that so well in 2020. I know you'll do it in 2021. Offering boxes are there on the table as you come. And also as you go, if you didn't have a chance to drop it in on your way in, then please uh, take advantage of it on your way out. Also, youth, let's let our youth head on down now. Youth, you're welcome to slip out at this time.